Let's begin this morning on line number two up in Goose Bay. Good morning, Jim. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm fine, Mr. Learning. Thank you for joining us again, sir. Yeah, yeah I'm starting to sound like a bell, aren't I? No, mm -hmm. I tell Seriously. you, I think it's only the third time you and I have ever spoken, so hard from uh, repetitive at this point. What's on your mind? Uh, Muskrat Falls. Okay. Uh, my question is around um, where was Nick, where were Nick McGrath and Keith Russell and Mr. Penny was fighting for his job uh, on the uh, on the road. He stood up there with signs and did it, you know, it was really cold weather and the wind, this is cold part of the country in a cold morning. And then when he got his, his job, he pushed back further and said, well, there are more of us like me out there risking his own job and making a fuss. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the politician, they came out of the woodwork after the fact. That would be the opposition that came out uh, that I know about. Maybe it's a question I don't know uh, whether uh, McGraw and Russell weren't with uh, Yvonne and uh, Lisa and Randy when they met with with Nalcor to hash out this thing. So that's that's the question I have about speaking about our representation. We just don't hear from these guys on what we think are important close-up issues for us. What we see, of course, is the uh, typical party line being towed. And damn the representation if it goes against the party politic. What are some of the specific issues, Jim? Specific issue is yeah. representation. So far as what, what does that mean? Representation of elected officials? They should officials? have been there to protect the jobs that these people were looking for to make sure that this the paperwork was in order, that Labrador is lining up to get this work. Although, hey, I have to tell you, I don't totally agree with people being from a province lining up to get jobs just because they're from the province. But uh, that's the way this thing is written, so they have to follow these dictates. Well, that's right. I mean, if they agreed to the terms of the job or the benefits agreement, then they're the they're signatures and they should live up to it. Are we really not following along? That's, I think, a legitimate conversation, too. We know that a lot of the people who have applied, they may indeed have a duplicate to their own resume already on site. And we have a lot of apprentices who can't get jobs, which I think is a separate issue. But are we really not following along with this job report or the benefits agreement? I'm not so sure. If you read Nalcor's work, and no one has to believe everything they say or accept it on its face, but are we really not giving people who should get first crack, Aboriginals, Labradorians, and then the rest of the province, and then outside the province, are we not following along? No, and, and, and I think for me, being an environmentalist, this whole thing just stinks anyway, which is really a, a, a side point I, I want to make, the fact that the politicians never did come out to protect, uh, help protect our environment, and the whole thing, even our Labrador workers up there are you know, poisoning the waters and poisoning the fish. Poisoning the environment in general, blocking nutrients with this dam, and the, it's just a bloody mess. And these politicians haven't given us anything to protect, to talk about. They haven't just haven't talked about that, which is, I think, wrong. I mean, those of us against this on the environmental uh, side are have a we have a legitimate reason to be against it. And now we see. Uh, I'll just throw something else in here. Now we see Mr. Williams likely to come back if he sees this thing is floundering to make sure it goes through to protect his interests, whatever they are, and we'll never know because he's going to be one super lobbyist if he's not going to be the head politician again. And Labrador, to him, is just a warehouse. And that's a point of contention that really rankles my... Uh, gets me up. So far as the politicians role go in protecting the environment, when there's an environmental assessment uh, commission, which of course is part and parcel with this kind of project, when it does get released from environmental assessments, are we still saying that it's politicians that are pulling those strings? It's never been given the due diligence and the hard, cold, sober eye look at the effect on the environment? It's a foregone conclusion that they're going to do this and damn the environment. We've seen that because there were over 71 uh, deficiencies that should have been made up according to the JRP. Never even touched. They had no intention. They had maize in there where there should have been shells. And that kind of language speaks to the fact that it's just environment doesn't matter. It's a make-work program for billions of dollars. It's a welfare program, so it just gets pushed ahead. And now we're in there as Labradorians poisoning our own waters. I mean, this we've done this. Everybody does this, of course, but we're doing it on a grand scale. Well, and fair enough, whether or not the welfare project is applicable or appropriate, we can talk about that on a standalone basis. But when it comes to the environmental impact, Jim, a lot of people just hear that phrase and they say, well, I assume there's going to be a negative impact if we have heavy machinery digging around the big river, the Grand River, and the Churchill. What exactly are the concerns? I know some of them because I've heard from people on this issue, but I'm not well versed in the environmental impact. Why don't you start from the beginning? And we won't go exhaustively with this, but give us some idea 
idea what your number one concerns are about nutrients and or methylmercury, how it's created and what the impact is. Okay, if you go up to the, the big area they created when they when the Winnica Power was flooded, Winnica Power, they call that a small wood reservoir now. Mm-hmm. When that was flooded, that over 2,000 square miles of water created this big reservoir. That, of course, rose up over all of the vegetation around it and flowed down through the stream and into the into the big river valley, which, and the signs are up. I mean, I've paddled the river a few times, and the signs are there. Don't eat this certain amount of fish. Beyond this, you're going to have problems, neurological or whatever methylmercury brings. So now you add uh, the lower portion of it to that methylmercury store. It just, it's, it's beleaguering the, the, the thing. And nutrient-wise, no science has been done regarding what nutrients flow out of that river valley. We, I count eight rivers flowing out of that river valley, and they're major rivers. Started, the Elizabeth might be the smallest, and, of course, the big river itself is the biggest, but all of the other rivers, Minope, um, Cash, well, I, I won't go through the eight, but okay. all those other rivers create the nutrients that flow out there. What's coming out has not been measured before, and what will it be after? We know there was, uh, say, uh, generally speaking, people believe that the codfish stock suffered because of the uh, blockage of the first pen stocks and, and whatnot to right. get the Churchill up. So if this is an extenuation of that, the Labrador Sea is going to be a dead sea with regard to supplies from, from that source. Like, if the science was not done, and the science was not done, we know that, Nalcor has this terrible thing of saying that all of this will be mitigated. Yeah, you can say what you like, but what do you do? That's, that is a, the perfect and the only real question, isn't it? And I guess that lends itself to my next point. We don't know, and people are not convinced that there's the need for that amount of power to be generated in the first place. So look no further than the fact we're willing to sell up to 60% of the Muskrat Falls generated power. But for any further generation opportunities, whether it's today or in 20 years or 50 years, we are going to need more power, whether it be to sell for money and or to use ourselves. If you look at Holyrood, you look at some of the evils associated with natural gas on shore, fracking and otherwise, and hydro, does it not present a a relatively is it not a good option when looking at the green and the environmental protection of generating power and I ask this as a fundamental question not implying that it is or is not because I don't know what the direct relation are of green I know that it's got to be better than Holyrood but some yeah. as far as the other issues go sir what do we do and how do you actually balance that knowing we're going to generate power and you and I both know that that's one of the foregone conclusions to use your words where does hydro stand in the, uh, the best of the worst list well, I think that just the discussion we just had about the uh, methylmercury and the uh, nutrient blocking yeah. uh, speaks, a, uh, speaks a lot, says a lot about uh, the green part, portion of it. Now, when you add five years of pumping out enormous amounts of uh, hydrocarbon just to build that thing, uh, I don't think it, it is not green in the term in the sense of it was, it was a one of the run of the river green it's not it is not green no that is debatable right as a matter of fact the world dams people have said no it's not green and more and more people are saying it and with technology changing as fast as it is we're locked into this 60 60 and 61 legislation that says no more competition from anybody you're, you're done in labrador you can't you have to use this power which means the economics of it is, is horrendous because the economics of it means that i could buy from quebec hydro uh, i could pay a quarter of a cent a kilowatt hour to get that power and now i have as a citizen of labrador i have to subsidize 14 and 15 cents a kilowatt hour to help the mining country go this isn't going to work on an economic scale either well my concern mostly of course is the environment but economically we've all listened to uh, maurice adams we've listened to uh, tom adams we've listened to uh, 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 winston adams and des sullivan these people have put up some very intelligent arguments and phil Raphaels of montreal the helio center of why this is economically stupid. Well, wow. 23.9 cents a kilowatt hour coming out to be sold at 4.5 kilowatt cents an hour at the, at the link. Yes, but of and course, then with the, with the mass, with the mass, uh, 
price being even less than that, the New England mass price being even less than that, the economics is horrendous. Well, sometimes those numbers are presented in a convenient fashion as well, because what, no matter what it's sold for in the hub market, we're only selling it to a distributor who's then going to have his profit attached to it and not sold to the end user for three cents, four cents, five cents. So, but we present those numbers because it helps make their point. It doesn't mean that it's actually apples versus apples, but I, I understand. No, I get that. I, and I understand your point on that front. If the economic were better and more beneficial to the people of Labrador in jobs and the cost of power and otherwise, does that negate some of your environmental concerns, sir, or is it the, the be-all and end-all and it stops right there with your concern for the river? No, it, it, the environment is first. It has to be first because that's the ship we're traveling on. If we wreck the ship, nothing else really matters, and we are wrecking the ship. I mean, already uh, we're seeing the uh, effects of, of the uh, climate change, whether you argue about it or not. Sure. And more to the point now, the insurance companies are starting to bug in and say, we can't pay these prices anymore. You'll have to change your ways. So, no, the environment will always be the first. If you destroy what you're standing on, what else, what else can you do? You've done it. Mr. Learning, I always appreciate your perspective and your time here in the program. Thank you for calling. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. Jim Learning calling from Goose Bay this morning, Muskrat, and uh, some of the financials, but of course the environmental issue, which I think he's right. And there have been people who have tried, who were supposedly representing the environmental side, who have stuck to matters of law and high finance and whatnot as their area of expertise, of which they had very little. And we didn't talk about the environmental impacts very much, and that's true. Now, what are the options compared to other forms of generating electricity? Because you know we are. We're going to. Doesn't mean it's right, but the fact remains we will take other opportunities to generate electricity, whether it be from natural gas and or wind or solar or tidal or otherwise. So where does hydro stack up? It's funny how some at some point in history, people refer to it as the green option. And then even some of those who proposed that hydro was a good clean option are now opposed to it because... And I'm not saying Mr. Learning, who I respect a great deal, but there are some with their own agenda who will oppose it because their organizations rely on funding from those concerned with the environment. So when they said hydro was okay compared to fracking, then, of course, when hydro was being developed, well, it's a huge problem. They'll fight it. 